Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and uh, today I have uh, set up my Macintosh Classic machine. You might remember this machine from a couple of other uh, videos I've done uh, recently and uh, in the last video with this machine I tried to connect a hard drive but uh, I was actually unsuccessful about that uh, because of uh, different reasons but uh, now I actually got a new device called uh, Blue Scussy so um, this is a kit uh, containing uh, a microcontroller and uh, an additional PCB. The Blue Scussy is actually a little device that makes it possible to connect a SD micro memory card to the computer and use that as a Scussy drive and yeah hopefully this will work but I have to build the thing first. <laughs> The microcontroller is an STM32, which is an ARM uh, Cortex uh, microcontroller uh, from ST Electronics. And together with uh, this um, little PCB that uh, has a uh, uh, SCSI connector and a couple of resistors and a memory card reader, uh, this will function as a SCSI disk in the Mac. And speaking about PCBs, uh, this looks like a nice uh, little PCB. If you are doing hobby projects like this and you want to produce your own PCBs, uh, you can actually go to PCBWay.com and uh, upload your Gerber files and uh, have an instant quote on uh, the number of PCBs you want. And uh, the prices are affordable and uh, the five first are actually free. Also check out their other services like CNC machining, flex PCBs and 3D printing. All right, let's get starting and assembling this requires a little bit of soldering of course and perhaps the most difficult job is this little micro SD card reader that is a surface mount component and yeah, as you can see, very small pins, perhaps. All right, let's assemble the thing. And it actually came with a brief instruction on the paper. So um, I'm not uh, completely on my own here. That's good. I guess I'll start with the most difficult task, which is this um, card reader. And uh, yeah, it's pretty small. So I'll try to uh, just nick it down in the corner and then try with some drag solder technique over these uh, connections here. Very small pins. Make sure the solder iron tip is clean and nice and shiny. I apply some flux first and that helps not only the soldering but to keep uh, the little uh, CF card reader uh, stuck to the PCB while I solder. Then I just gently place it onto the PCB and uh, try to position it. So now I think it actually is uh, correctly lined up and uh, it's pretty stuck to the PCB so I'm ready to solder these uh, small contacts here and uh, that's the, the difficult part. Use a little bit more flux. So with the drag soldering technique you just add a little bit of solder to the tip of your uh, solder iron and uh, try to drag it over uh, the contacts. So now I 
couple of uh, those got breached, but uh, then just use your uh, iron to go over again and try to remove the bridge. So I actually think that looks okay. A little bit uh, excess solar on this one. Now I'm gonna clean off the flux and uh, actually I'm gonna check the connections with the multimeter before I actually continue with the rest. Because the microcontroller card that goes on top uh, like this, it's actually in the way of the uh, card reader if you later need to uh, uh, remove it to resolder it. I'm gonna check that all the pins have uh, continuity to the correct place uh, but it might be hard to follow uh, the traces <laughs> there's one yeah everything seems to be correct Next I'm gonna do these two diodes, D4 and D5, and those are gonna go on the back side of the PCB, and these are actually a little too large, so yeah, for the holes, I'm actually gonna bend them a little bit inwards, like that. You don't wanna bend too close to the actual component, you might break it then, or damage it. So this is of course not the best or most pretty solution, but the instruction also says that you're gonna, you have to need to, you need to bend them uh, down like that. So that's the result and uh, not pretty. They should perhaps have used surface mounted uh, diodes instead. <laughs> Next I'm going to solder in this uh, controller board, uh, which is also known as the blue pill. And I was wrong before, it's actually this way, uh, the USB connector on top of uh, the SD card reader. So that's going to be a short uh, soldering session. <laughs> I'll speed it up for you. Then I'm gonna cut all uh, these pins and uh, these are kind of dangerous, they fly really quick and can of course hit you in the face if you're not careful. Next are these uh, resistor networks and they are different, uh, these two are 220 ohms and these other two are 330 and they go in a specific direction uh, they have a little dot on uh, one side and one end uh, that corresponds to the square hole uh, in the PCB so the two 220 ones should go uh, nearest the blue pill and uh, the other ones uh, away and they actually go in the opposite direction, uh, these two. Then this uh, power connector, uh, which is uh, something you need to use if uh, the machine doesn't have uh, enough power to power this board by the SCSI connector. Then 
there's a couple of uh, pin headers with jumpers that goes here. There's also some uh, debug headers uh, that goes here that uh, maybe you can use to, uh, yeah, to uh, update the firmware on uh, the microcontroller. It's not uh, necessary to solder them in, but uh, I'm gonna do it. Finally, the 50-pin uh, SCSI connector goes here and um, there's a little mark there on the middle which uh, indicates that this uh, groove here should go that way and that pin 1 is there. 50 pins soldering job. <laughs> Just attack the corners first. Alrighty, that was a solder job and uh, yeah, I think it went uh, very smooth, no problems at all and uh, yeah, just gonna clean off uh, the board a little bit and then ready to test. All right, so I opened the machine and um, actually the last time I tried to install a uh, hard drive to this machine was, uh, I was using this one, <laughs> um, but I could not format it because it uh, was not able to. Um, I had to first to um, use a hacked version of the HD uh, tool that uh, you use to format this uh, non-Apple hard drives, but uh, it didn't work with that either. So hopefully this time it will um, work out. Now before I'm gonna test this, uh, I actually need to prepare a little memory card and uh, I actually gone to the Blue Scussy GitHub page where you can uh, download the hardware Gerber files and things like that. Uh, if you wanna produce this uh, card yourself, uh, but here's a link to some uh, pre-made images and um, I just downloaded uh, a few from uh, Macintosh Garden and uh, also a blank uh, formatted uh, image. Then I have uh, formatted this uh, micro SD card, uh, which is uh, 128 gigabytes, so it's a little bit too large perhaps, but uh, we'll see how it goes and uh, formatted it as XFAT and uh, I placed the images inside an images folder and then one of the unzipped images, 707 HDI file. So uh, uh, now this image uh, should be good to go. And if you want to install the operating system yourself, you can uh, use this pre-formatted blank image, of course, and install to that. Otherwise, you can uh, make a custom disk image. If you uh, are using a modern Macintosh, you can just uh, use uh, the terminal and uh, issue some commands to uh, make a uh, yeah, um, HD image of your own size and content. I have inserted uh, the memory card now and uh, let's see if we can uh, just uh, connect this and uh, try to not touch anything in dangerous inside here. <laughs> I just leave it uh, like that for now and uh, as usual when you're dealing with uh, CRTs like this you must be very careful because they carry high voltage that can kill you.
So let's turn it on. Well, <laughs> to turn it on, I need to attach the power cable. <laughs> Again, let's turn it on. The microcontroller starts to blink with green. So there is activity and it gets power from the machine, which is great. Now let's see what happens uh, on the machine. No, I have a floppy inside, um, which it started to boot from. Maybe I should have taken it out before I tried. Let's restart now without the um, disk in. So obviously uh, it does not boot now, so <laughs> yeah. Got to read some more, see what uh, might be the problem. I read through the README files a couple of uh, more times and I actually found out that uh, the naming convention on the disk images uh, has a meaning and uh, of course the image I downloaded had uh, another name than the convention. But I actually saw that uh, there was written a log file on uh, this card, that means uh, that uh, card reader is working. So I renamed the image now and I'm gonna test it again. Let's see now. Yay, it works. <laughs> nice. You can actually have uh, several images onto the same memory card and uh, you configure them uh, as different uh, SCSI drives with different SCSI IDs uh, through the file name of uh, the image file. Nice! This is the RA SCSI 701 uh, image that uh, is pre-made, so uh, I don't know what's on it, probably not a lot. No, it's actually open to uh, install uh, other software just to download uh, from the internet and uh, start testing uh, maybe some games or something. <laughs> now I have three uh, uh, hard drive images on this and the uh, first one is now a system 753 I think and then I also have a blank 50 megabyte uh, image that I am going to try to install the Norwegian version of uh, system 7. Address error. Okay, so um, that did not work. Maybe it's uh, too little uh, RAM. Starting without the extension, I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, hey, I'm trying what's uh, told me. <laughs> okay, so now it actually managed to boot. Alright, so in this version we actually have a lot of extra stuff, like a video player. <laughs> but we don't have any video hardware capable of uh, running video, so... Uh, <laughs> does not work. Okay, let's see what we have in the control panels. There's actually no file browser and uh, I was thinking maybe I would see uh, three different um, hard drives here, but uh, nope. So now I only have uh, the blank HD image uh, at uh, SCSI ID 0 and uh, now it can't boot uh, to the hard drive. So I thought I'll install uh, System 7 from these original uh, System 7 floppy disks, see how it goes. And this is the Norwegian uh, version, so unfortunately the text will be in Norwegian, but uh, <laughs> I think you uh, might understand what I'm doing anyway. The Blue Scusi emulator actually has some uh, special code that uh, circumvents the check that actually checks for an original uh, Apple hard drive and, uh, and because of that it should not fail uh, the check 
Hopefully it will uh, install onto the virtual disk. Now it just says uh, welcome. And now it says we need to change to what station we want to uh, install to. It found the Mac HD and is now preparing the installation. So it seems to be working fine. All right, so now it's gonna copy five uh, floppy disks. So this is gonna take a while. <laughs> Tools disk one, then it's back to installer disk number one. <laughs> All right, that was a successful installation. All right, let's uh, restart and uh, see if it boots onto the new hard drive. Yeah, that was quite quick and uh, now we have a new Mac HD with uh, System 7, the Norwegian version. <laughs> Here's a readme file. Just some introduction. So now I'm copying a couple of programs from uh, Floppy onto the desktop. So this is a photo of Steve Jobs. So that uh, loaded pretty quickly. Let's see if we can copy some games that I have on this floppy. That's the way to do it. <laughs> And then this funny uh, thing that if you want to eject the floppy disk, you just drag it to the trash can. <laughs> Missile command. And the sound on this computer does not work, as you might uh, have heard already, no beeps and dings. So uh, I have to look into that in another video. I uh, need to... Um, check if the capacitors are leaked or something and um, if I need to buy new ones and do some recapping perhaps. Alrighty, that's it for this video. Uh, I made my goal which was to um, have a hard drive solution and uh, that's what I did and it seems to be working just fine, the blue SCSI device and uh, as you know I always uh, like this uh, modern solution that can uh, be used on old machines and if it's a kit where I can build it myself it's even better. Alright, so uh, I have a few more things I want to do with this machine in future videos. Uh, I'll come back with that later and um, then there's nothing more to do than just to say thanks to my patrons and uh, all the other supporters and uh, yeah the subscribers and hope you press the like button. Um, so thanks, uh, bye bye.